Send it, me master, baby. That's me. Let's go. What do you want? You what? all believed it. Oh my God, you know, I didn't think I was such a good liar until now because that was the biggest lie I've told this year. There can be only one. Nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. On January 26, 2020, well-known YouTuber M. Plummen posted a video titled There Will Never Ever Be Another Melee Player Like Hungrybox. Clocking in at 1 hour and 24 minutes, it quickly became his most popular YouTube video to date. Weighing in at almost 10 million views, the equivalent of every person in Hungry watching the box at least once, this documentary would go on to have profound effects. First, Hungrybox's popularity skyrocketed. A niche pro gamer now was becoming somewhat of a household name. Second, Melee's popularity skyrocketed. The second game in the Smash Bros franchise saw monolithic growth, as a wave of new players rushed in to see what this 2001 fighting game was all about. Finally, M. Plemons' video also inspired a new wave of content creators. Two years after M. Plemons' video came out, I began working on my first documentary. With little understanding of audio or visual production, three weeks later, there will never ever be another Melee player like Amsa was born. And in the video description, I subtitled it a sequel to M. Plemons' Hungrybox video. Despite its shortcomings, I loved making that documentary, and I owe it to M. Lemon, because without his Hungrybox video, I wouldn't have gotten the idea to document Amsa's story, and without documenting Amsa, I ceased to start my deep dive into the competitive world of Melee, and therefore, my channel doesn't even exist. But the deeper I dove into competitive Melee, the more I realized something unsettling. In present day Melee, the gods are the old generation, and Hungrybox is the last of the gods. <laughs> What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Melee's most popular documentary has a thesis statement that is flat out false. If you're unaware, the early days of competitive Melee saw five powerhouses of the game emerge. Mewtwo King, Mango, Armada, Hungrybox, and PPMD. For the longest time, nobody could beat these players but themselves, and their reign was so dominant that they earned the title of Melee Gods. However, as the years went on, their dominance waned as new emerging talent entered the scene, and eventually, a majority of the gods had to retire or stop playing outright. But while it makes for a compelling story to say that only one god of Melee stood the test of time and ultimately triumphed, it leaves viewers in the know uncomfortable, because Hungrybox isn't in fact the last remaining Melee god. He's one of two. In sympathy for the villain, M. Plemon starts off by documenting the concept of yin and yang, a tale of how both sides of an equation are needed to tell a complete and whole story. Two opposing forces which complement and complete each other. Within Melee's multi-decade long competitive stretch, if there ever were to be a yin and yang of the game, it would be the Melee gods Hungrybox and Mango. It's me and you! Yep. You're the last of the gods. I really root for you. I really want you to be the best you can be. Yep. You came from my time. Agreed. You started being good back then. I really do. Bottom of my heart. I really do root for you. We're literally the last of the Panther. And uh, that's why we say it. Around the one hour and four minute mark, M. Plemon talks about this other melee god, Mango. Mango, perhaps the most dominant player ever in his prime, failed to win a tournament in 2018. And while he can still crank out the occasional epic performance, his inconsistency has relegated him to a shadow of his former glory, placing his god status in serious question. What? His inconsistency made him a shadow of his former glory, putting his god status in question? It's the truth? I don't think anybody at any moment ever in the history of the Melee scene since I've been in it in 2015 has ever said, I don't think Mango's a god anymore. These days, it seems that Hungrybox is the only god left. It's wow, are we saying that? Oh, shit. Okay, hold up. Relax. Alone. In his time, there were four others like him. Now, there's just one. I, ooh, I don't, ooh, I don't know about that. Oh, that is... <laughs> Mango was ranked third. <laughs> that is insanely biased. In mere seconds, M. Plemon counted out one of Melee's most prominent figures, and there have been many times like it where players have been unfairly knocked down. You know how hard I work on here? And if time has proven anything, it will continue to happen again and again. That's this it. might be it! And that, that is, is it. Mango! C9. Mango is your Get On My Level 2019 champion! Oh, 
Ooh, nice crouch, though. Oh, and he catches the roll. Punishing the smash. Let's go, baby. Implement was wrong, and he knew it too. While his video was posted weeks into 2020, instead of showing all of Mango's results up to that point, he conveniently excluded 2019, and only showed a winless 2018. With this decision, I am reminded of a quote by American photographer and filmmaker David Vornarovit. A camera in some hands can preserve an alternate history. In Mango's Twitch chat, a funny little saying will pop up every now and then. Thou shall not sleep on the kid. To sleep on someone essentially means failing to understand one's true potential. Mikael Moem, before becoming Bouldering's world champion, was slept on. Magnus Carlsen, before winning his first world title, was slept on. Mango, before becoming the undisputed greatest melee player of all time in 2021, was slept on in 2020. For the same reason Emplemon felt the need to document Hungrybox's story after seeing unfair treatment unfold, so too do I today with Mango. While Mango's story is a tale of inconsistency, you can never fully count him out, because just when you least expect it, Mango will pick up the pieces and have a tournament run that defies expectations. A tournament run that will go down in history. A tournament run that will never ever be forgotten. And it will shine light on Mango's true reality. That this is not a man who is a shadow of his former glory, but a resurgent force that comes back again and again and again to prove that, bar to none, he's Melee's greatest of all time. So while there may never ever be another Melee player like Hungrybox, or Amsa, or anyone else, you can bet your bottom dollar that there will never be one like Mango. The thing is, I can lose all the tournaments, I can never win again, but I'll always have something that you'll never have. The people. That is art and it's in another self. And they say it's lonely at the top, and it is true. I've been at the top. It is very lonely at the top. But you know what's scarier at the top? When you look down at the mountain and you see a bunch of little crackhead fox players climbing up, grabbing your ankles. And that is the moment when your ego tries to cover itself and be like, okay, I don't want to try anymore, I don't care anymore. And it's like, no, you're just fucking scared. I think the most unique thing about Mango is we only know and we only believe whatever he says about himself. And I might not be the most optimal or the smartest, but when I get going, it's a sight, it's poetry, it's, it's beautiful. Newark, California is home to an array of curious folk who inexplicably became intertwined with some of the most recognizable bird icons in pop culture. First, there's Cristina Valenzuela, the voice actor Tulin in the popular Nintendo Zelda games Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Is that you? Second, there's Rashad Penny, former running back of the Seattle Seahawks and current running back of the Philadelphia Eagles. Rashad Penny! And finally, there's the best melee Falco main in the world. Joseph Marquez, known by the world as Mango. And the crowd cheering for a four stop. This could be it. This is it. Mango throughout the years has had three monikers attributed to him. The Kid, the Buster, and the Goat. Each of these nicknames tell a unique side to this alluring pro player's story. Let's start with the first one, the Kid. Mango was born December 10th, 1991, and raised by a single mother in this single-story house. Although the neighborhood wasn't the greatest, as a kid, Mango didn't really notice, because what you grow up with is simply what you know. After meeting a lot of other kids his own age, a neighborhood friend group emerged. The cool thing is uh, my, friend, my other friend lived right there, my best friend at the time lived right there. And every day after school, Mango and his buddies would hop his school's fence to play baseball and other sports. And I just want everyone to know that I was the fastest gate hopper the world's ever seen. This lifestyle was so natural that Mango even entertained the idea of becoming a pro sports player back in the day. But that would soon change when a certain neighborhood kid knocked on his door. The professional melee player, Lucky. Lucky is out attack. playing him right now, man. Yeah, Whoa! What is the totally back guard? Oh, we went for Oh my goodness gracious, is Lucky gonna beat Mango? At this point, he wasn't Lucky yet, but instead a scraggly personable fifth grader by the name of Joey. Joey's friend, knowing how good the two were at the fighting game melee, 
pitted the duo against each other to see who was the best in the neighborhood. After a quick play session, it was proven to be, as it always has been, Mango. Mango continued to play baseball after school while Joey, sure that he was the best, got to practicing. And soon enough, Joey's practice paid off. When the two sat down together to play a rematch, it was Joey who consistently won. This change in the neighborhood's leaderboard saw Mango gradually replace sports with Melee, because in his own words, I can't live in a world where Joey is better than me. And he was talking hella shit and I was like, and ever since that day I just like slowly stopped playing sports. A friendly rivalry bloomed, and year after year the pendulum of who was the best in the neighborhood oscillated. And as a result, the two now best friends got fiendishly good at this 2001 fighting game. A couple years later, the two figure out that there are tournaments posted for this game online. Once they find listings in the LA area, they knew it was time to compete. While they typically placed well in the more common 1v1 singles category, it was ultimately in their 2v2 doubles performances where their skills shined. Under their team name Four Leaf Mango, the duo was quickly becoming one of the city's most formidable. All that practice between the friends was paying off, literally. While other 15 year olds were thinking about jobs for money, Mango and Joey were earning cash through local melee tournaments. When the duo came back home with their first ever prize money, Mango's mom stopped paying her son allowance, as she figured with Joey and melee, he would be just fine. It turns out, she was right. Every couple of tournaments, Mango and Joey would come back with something. A 20 here, a 50 there, and on special occasions, even a couple of hundreds. For two high schoolers, that kind of cash was enough to make them feel like millionaires. And although they didn't realize it back then, this feeling of being on top of the world, of being successful at something, helped them avoid the tougher parts of growing up in a bad neighborhood. While they saw a handful of their peers turn to gangs, Four Leaf Mango continuously turned to Melee. When nobody else really did, Melee gave these two kids from Norwalk a shot. In 2007, Mango and Lucky would place first and second respectively in singles and joint first and doubles at the tournament SoCal's Best. It was clear they had dominated their regional scene, and now it was time to widen the scope. For the first time, the biggest fighting game tournament series of all time, EVO, was to include Melee in its 2007 game lineup. With Melee's addition, Lucky and Mango quickly signed up and got to practicing. While Lucky practiced his fox, a character defined by its fast and technical gameplay, Mango practiced an entirely different character, one that didn't see much competitive use at all, Jigglypuff. In 2007, while Fox was considered a great character, Jigglypuff was considered average. But used in the right hands, one could overcome these weaknesses with her hidden strengths. Multiple jumps meant she didn't have to fight on the ground. A disjointed, more powerful than usual back air made up for the unusable special moves and a one-hit KO move called Rest could make the other characters scared to even approach for a fast KO of their own. Nobody showcased these strengths quite like the Canadian smasher The King. In 2007, the Jigglypuff main uploaded the first of its kind combo video, which highlighted the character's vast potential. Clip after clip, the King made Jigglypuff seem less like a middle tier and more like a top one. Mango was inspired and decided to devote all his energy into learning how to best use this character for EVO. Soon, the date arrived and the two skilled friends trekked over to Nevada to play the world's best. Melee's EVO debut saw over half of its top 10 players contend for the title of champion. Lucky would put up an impressive fight, but ultimately fall to the top talent, placing 17th out of 270 players. This wasn't just SoCal anymore, this was the world's best, and it just so happened that one of them was in Mango's starting pool, the first of Melee's five gods, you 2 King. Ready? Mango would impressively exit his pools on winner's side, and work his way all the way up to winner's semis, where he was set to face the undisputed best player in the world, Ken. Back in the day, no player had a higher major tournament win-loss ratio than Ken. In fact, the Marf main won so much prize money that it financed his entire college degree, and made him so well known that he even featured in CBS's reality TV show Survivor, under the tag Professional Gamer. The Melee community called him something else entirely, the King of Smash. Mango's Cinderella run would surely meet its end with a couple quick swings of Ken's sword. Or would it? Well, Mango's up at a 48% lead with one minute to go. Air combo, off the edge. Another hit, that's it! 
Mango, an unranked player, had just defeated the world's number one. And although Mango would later get knocked out of winners by Samus player Hugs, and then eliminated by Ken in their loser's bracket rematch, the 15-year-old set an unbelievable precedent at one of his first ever major tournaments. No matter who was the best in the world, Mango had what it took to beat them. I'm not scared to play anybody. I'll play anybody. Not scared about anybody. Well, I see a couple people. They're all my friends that I play every day, so... Mm -hmm. Either way, we're all going home happy. Back home, Mango kept winning local and regional tournaments to solidify himself as one of the best players on the West Coast, and he would retrospectively debut on the Melee Top 10 list at 10th in the world. The only other player from the West Coast to join him was Ken, for who the first time ever wasn't ranked first. Instead, it was Mewtwo King from the East who overtook him. The entire rest of the top 10 was East Coast talent as well, and perhaps unsurprisingly, they therefore viewed themselves as the superior region. In the East Coast's eyes, Ken was no longer the King of Smash, and Mango's Cinderella Evo run was simply a lucky fluke, where Mango took advantage of Evo's best of three format instead of the more standard best of five. So in the next iteration of Melee's top 10, surely they both would be replaced. Well, the East Coast was only half right. Mango knew of the East Coast's low view of the West, and so using the last of his Evo prize money, he last minute bought a ticket to Baltimore, Maryland, and set out to prove them wrong. But things didn't go to plan at first. In the very first bracket round of Pound Free, Mango was set to face Silent Wolf, one of the only other West Coast players in attendance. Perhaps in defiance of the East Coast spectators, the duo, instead of playing their mains, had fun playing unserious Link dittos. As a consequence though, Mango would lose their set, which amused the East Coast players to no end. To make matters worse, Silent Wolf lost his very next match to Chudat, and then got knocked out of the tournament entirely by New York up-and-comer Hacks for 17th. If this was the best that the West Coast had, then the East was simply right. They were better. They were right here, and they were right there. And they're just shit-talking me, and like, I was 15, and I remember like, not that I wanted to cry, but I remember being like, this is gonna beat the shit out of me. I'm like, dude, I might not be built for this. Like, these motherfuckers are just beating me down. With Silent Wolf's unimpressive result, Loser's Bracket Mango found himself representing an entire nation. In Losers, Mango will kick it into second gear, defeating his toughest slew of opponents yet, including rank 6 Azen, rank 5 Chudat, and a rank 9 Quart. Unbelievably, Mango found himself in the Losers final match, where he was set to face off against PC Chris, ranked 4th in the world. I remember Hugs talking to me about like, I went to a California tournament and I was like, yo, who should I watch out for? And he's like, you don't know who he is, but you need to watch out for this guy in Mango. Tied 1-1, to one, down to their last stock on Game 3, whoever holds their composure better here will make it to Grand Finals. Mango had already beaten Mewtwo King once at EVO, but it wasn't a best of five set, and it was written off as a fluke. Now, since Mango came from the loser side bracket, he will have to beat Mewtwo King in two best of five sets to be crowned champion. The mutters in the crowd were clear. There was no way Mango was winning this time. No one understands the game like me. Like, Mewtwo King's always like, I know the most about the game. I'm like, yeah, but I understand the game the most. Like, there's a, comp there's a big difference between knowing and understanding. I hear when people are like, well, you always do this. It's like, no, you can do anything you want. It's just every situation, even if you think you've seen it a million times, it's always a little different. And then in that little difference, you can just do something else. And like, they don't see it coming, and then that's, you, get the, you get the open up, and then you can go to town. It's so endless. It's like, why limit yourself to one thing when you can just do anything you want? Set one would go to a final game five. When I play Super Smash Brothers, uh... I use a lot of my ability to recognize patterns and to make accurate predictions to choose my next move. There are so many different options and I, I don't quite have them all at my head at once. I have this theory that Mango sees them all at once and chooses in the situation what he thinks is best at the time that it's happening. If you ask Yuji King, I have heard them say, like, you can't read this guy. I don't know what he's going to do.
Mango, with an old school technique called the Barrel Hog, takes away Mewtwo King's last chance of salvaging set 1. The bracket is reset, and it's on to set 2. Down to his last hope, Mewtwo King makes his third and last character switch of the set. Mango just beat the new current best player back to back to conclude what many consider to be one of the most impressive losers runs of all time. It would be the only tournament Mewtwo King didn't win in 2008, a tiny yet monolithic west coast induced stain. Lucky and Mango would keep playing Melee for the next couple of weeks in celebration of Mango's pound free win, but also in celebration of something new, the release of the next installment of Super Smash Bros, Brawl. Just a month after pound free, the game was set for release in early March 2008. After a 7 year lifespan for Melee, players were ecstatic for the new installment of Smash to come out. Pound Free was even symbolically held to be the last major Melee tournament ever, a solid goodbye to a solid game. Now, it was on to Brawl. But when Brawl was finally released, players instantly made a somber realization. The game was a noticeable departure from its fast-paced predecessor. Brawl was the new game on the block, and with that simple fact, it took precedence. At EVO 2008, Melee would be replaced with Brawl, and in the MLG Pro Circuit, which had hosted Melee since 2004, Brawl would once again reign supreme. With the loss of big corporations backing the game, there wouldn't be a single national Melee tournament for a whole year. The release of Brawl signaled the dusk of Melee's Dark Age, as several players turned their back on the game they once loved. But when the world let go of Melee, some steadfast and stubborn players hung on, refusing to follow the lure of pro circuits, sponsors, and money. When his aunt got divorced and moved in with her two children, a teenage Mango had to make the tough decision and move out due to space. With him was his GameCube controller and Melee. Because to him, the game was something Brawl could never be. A short, four-letter word. Sick. And that's all that mattered. Competitively, Super Smash Bros. Melee was no longer a professional scene in the true sense of the word. Instead, it became underground, where pro venues were replaced with basements and plastic tables where thousands of dollars of prize money was replaced with a wad of crumpled dollar bills. But the players didn't care, in fact they rejoiced. Because for the first time in Melee's history, Melee became an esports novelty. A scene 100% player organized and run. And now it was up to these steadfast players to revive the game they loved. Is, is this the end? Melee looked like it was on its death throes. And it's like, you know what, let's just do one more. Yeah, as farewell. Exactly one year from Brawl's release, the Melee community made a statement, and created from the ground up Melee's first national tournament since Pound Free, the aptly named Revival of Melee. Like a phoenix emerging from the ash, Melee was reborn. Mango would win Revival of Melee, where he would once again take out Mewtwo King twice, but it wouldn't be the talking piece of this tournament like it was at Pound Free. Instead, people were more interested in the set that occurred right before Grand Finals. Mewtwo King vs. The Shizwiz. Players and spectators didn't know it at the time, but the single game would eventually amass over 1 million views. The dynamic combos from Shiz, the triumphant comeback from Mewtwo King, and the overall excitement from the crowd and commentators showcased to the world how sick Melee could truly be. So when the next grassroots tournament series was made out of the rubble, Genesis, it surpassed the player count of EVO 2007 to become the biggest Melee tournament at the time. It was clear that Melee had a natural alert that went beyond money and corporate status, and one player would be reeled in like no other, one of Melee's future five gods, Armada. Traveling all the way over from Sweden for his first ever US tournament, the Peach player would give Mango surprisingly quite the fight in winner's finals. beating him 3-2. Armada had come out of nowhere and had shocked the North American scene, 
taking out its greatest players in his wake. All he needed was two more games to take the entire tournament outright. Oh, shit. He played his heart out, he ended up losing the match. There was a stitch face involved like near the end and he just lost. And then he turns to me and he says, I can't do it. My goal was just to convince him that he could still do it. Everyone's yelling, it's so hype! Mango! 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 He still has a long way to go. Mango back into it. Mango was going to have to dig deep if he stood a chance. All of the Genesis Grand Final games combined, Mango vs Armada would surpass 1 million total views, and overnight a world stage rivalry was born, and with rivalries comes attention. Eyes were slowly starting to turn away from Brawl and onto the new group of top Melee players. Revival of Melee and Genesis winner Mango, Apex 2012 and 13 winner Armada, Apex 2010 and Revival of Melee 2 winner Hungrybox, Herb 2 and the Big House Free winner Mewtwo King, and Revival of Melee Free and Pound 5 winner PPMD. In biblical terms, Genesis is when God created man. In Melee terms, Genesis is when man became God. The next Melee Major, Pound 4, would serve as the first tournament where all five gods were in attendance. And once again, Mango emerged victorious. Firebox walks off. I don't even think he shook hands with Mango. And it was enough to etch his name into the annals of Super Smash Bros. Melee history. For the first time, Mango would be named the best player in the world. But after earning the number one spot, Mango did something wholly unexpected. He took a hiatus from Melee, and in doing so, the game had lost one of its five gods before the era could even truly begin. Because I quit after I won Pound 4, I basically... Like most people don't know that like I just like completely stopped playing the game. At this point in his life, Mango was living with Lucky and his family. Mango had just graduated high school and although they were elated, a creeping and common question was hitting the adolescent. What now? Mango chose to enroll at his local community college, but he realized early on that it wasn't for him. I, I've never really been a school guy. I think school's cool if like you go for something you really like. Although he was passing all his classes, Mango made the decision to drop out. Now, more than ever, Mango was at a dead end, unsure where to direct his life. He was the best Melee player in the world, but back then careers weren't built off of playing video games. Sponsors were virtually non-existent in Smash at this point, and the few corporations who did give Melee a shot backed out as soon as Brawl was released. The time of multiple thousand dollar first place prize pools that Ken got to bask in was long gone, and nobody was sure if it would ever come back. So Mango decided that he needed a real job, and if Smash Brothers wouldn't work, he would do the next best thing, and become a boxer. I thought about growing up, I'm like, what do I really like? And growing up we fought, like, not like fist fight, but we'd body shots wrestle, like, it was kind of easy, I was like, oh, I could do that, like, so I remember I was working out every day. Soon, Mango was devoting all his time to physical training. There was no more melee left to be played, there was only the ring. Until an unlikely person reversed Mango's course. The person who finished right behind him in the 2009 rankings, Armada. Upon hearing about Mango's sudden absence from the game, Armada would taunt Mango and declare he was now the best melee player. So I was gonna go do boxing classes and Armada posted on Smashboards or Facebook or something. 
something about like, oh, I guess I'm the best at something, something winky face. And I was just like, ooh, you motherfucker. I was like, all right. Never, and then since then, I haven't worked out. My pride and ego just were like, no. I, like, I refuse to let it go down like this. Mango firmly decided that he would not let his rival take the number one spot purely by default. And this highlights something about the melee god. For better or worse, Mango is a very prideful player. It's grand finals of Pound 4, the first major melee tournament in 2010. The tournament has broken the biggest entrant record set just months ago by Genesis. And the massive crowd is ecstatic to see some high octane melee. Once it went pop, I just seen like 12 mother get up and just walk off. Get a mono left. A mono left. Like, damn, no one's watching that shit. Commentators are forced to stay. Yeah, we're forced. We're obligated. Might fall asleep to this. I'm kind of already tired. Although the two were revered for their own rivalry, the tension and excitement quickly drifted as soon as the set began, as Mango and Hungrybox were both playing Puff, to many the most defensive character in the cast. And so people from the audience started to leave early, as Puff dittos didn't capture their attention near as much as other high caliber matches like Shiz vs Mewtwo King. Change the channel, Marge! Mango, just like Hungrybox, had grown up taking this character to their peak. But once she arrived there, the community's perception of the character shifted. Instead of being a novel and unique pick, the community now ubiquitously saw her as an overpowered and overplayed one. Everyone in the crowd is shedding so broken. This transformation of character ideology would affect the two players differently. Hungrybox, whether out of necessity or choice, embraced the disdain and stuck it out with Puff. Mango, on the other hand, would take a different path. At the very end of Pound 4's Grand Finals, when Hungrybox misses a rest on Mango, instead of easily resting Hungrybox back and winning the entire tournament right then and there, Mango simply jabs. Mango! Mango! This prideful move could have cost Mango the entire tournament, but he didn't care. It was as if Mango had realized something in that exact moment. Jigglypuff wasn't for him anymore. Instead of utilizing the character's signature move, he simply tapped himself out. Besides doubles play and the rare 1v1 game, Mango won't play Puff ever again. 2010 saw Mango pick up a slew of new secondary characters, none more recognizable than Nintendo's signature mascot, Mario. At the time, Mario was considered a mid-tier, but Mango didn't care, and even sort of relished the rating. Once again, he could prove that it wasn't his character that defined his skill, but his skill that defined the character. Out of this bold and brash ideology, Scorpion Master 94 was born. After being banned on Smash boards in 2010, a group solution featuring DBR and Hugs and other SoCal Smashers came about during a nightly run to Denny's. The result was a fake alias, Scorpion Master, an alleged top smasher from Chile who was visiting the US soon to show off his sick, never before seen Mario. Players in on the joke would spread word of this mythical player and post video proof of Scorp making the mid tier look more like a top one. Sets from the local SoCal tournament G Rev X were posted online, where Scorpion Master, in his first tournament ever, was able to take sets off of Hugs and Zoo. Friendly sets were also posted, where Scorp beats the first ever Big House winner, Lovage, and its runner up, S2J. Whenever someone was skeptical, the SoCal community backed Scorp up in what many consider to be one of Melee's most legendary pranks. All eyes were on this virtually unknown player heading into the last major tournament of the year. This is Apex. So bring your A game, get ready for the best in the game, cause you know they can And not to lose, but to be victorious. Defeat will come quick, but victory is glorious. So use any trick they can to win, no doubt. Try to gimp you again, my game you a time you out. Comes down, last hit, last stop between the greatest. This ain't another tournament, it's Apex. While the four gods all placed in the top four at this high caliber tournament, Scorpion Master lost to players Eggs and Wobbles for 25th. While this is one of the highest competitive placements Mario has ever seen, for Mango, the placement was disastrous. Three years earlier in 2007, Mango attended his first ever major, Zero Challenge Free, and placed 25th. It was his untied worst melee placement ever, until now. When it was clear that Mario wasn't going to work, Mango tried a slew of secondaries, from Marf to Captain Falcon to even Link. Tournament results in late 2010 and early 2011 were therefore a mixed bag. By summer 2011, the Scorpion Master 94 saga had largely come to a close, as another player took the number one spot, Hungrybox. 
All right, Mango, it's about, oh, Hungrybox, but, oh. Never mentioned in Emplemon's video, Hungrybox's first time becoming number one wasn't 2017. It was seven years earlier, in 2010. Upon seeing Hungrybox become Melee's best player, Mango realized his frantic character picks weren't going to make the cut. But he didn't want to go back to Puff either. Although he believed his playstyle to be offensive enough to counteract the community's defense-oriented view of her, it wasn't enough to change their mind. With two opposing forces constantly getting in the way of one another, Mango chose the only plausible path. Choose a new character that wouldn't hinder a fast, unpredictable, and offensive playstyle, but rather enhance it. And so, from the dust of Scorpion Master 94 appear two new challengers, the space animals, Fox McCloud and Falco Lombardi. Fox and Falco are the same note played by different instruments. While the resonance is identical, lightning quick combos, shield pressure machines, and frame one shines, the sound each character produces is unique. While Falco's most versatile aerial attack is his down air, capable of sending opponents down to the fiery depths below, Fox's most versatile is his up air, capable of sending players straight up to the gates of firmament. Vice versa, the same can be said of their unbelievably swift one-frame shines. Falcos can be used to set up pillar combos, sending players up with shine and back down with dare, while foxes can spike a character down off the stage entirely. Together, these two characters are the fast and technical gameplay, and they would complement Mango to the point where he wouldn't turn back. Mango had played the Spaces in tournament before, but never to the extent that he had going forward. From now on, he was a spacey dual main. Like after I won ROM, people were like, oh, he only does it because no one knows how to fight Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff's broken, or you know, what all the dumb Jigglypuff hate that she gets. I want to show people that I can win, you know, not with just the gimmick, you know, so and then kept winning and then everyone had to, you know, accept that I'm actually, I'm actually good and I'm not just, you know, uh, banking on Puff's gimmicks. So that's the main reason I did it, was just to shut everyone up. Oh, that, that's it, baby! Smash! Easy, that's light work, baby. Oh! Play Bango when he's playing this girl. Bango's playing fucking amazing. I really don't see Taj beating him. A punky controller, dog! A punky controller! It's two years ago. Of course, I really wanted to win Genesis. It was so hyped, Europe against US for the first time. But yeah, it was two years ago. And Mango is playing serious this tournament. At least it looks like that. So I'll take my rematch now. It's another thing, like, uh, just um, like, uh, you know, country, country is always, it's, it's really fun just because everyone here is American and he wants to win. It's like winning. Like, if I win, I feel like I won for America, you know, which is always really fun. The encounter between these two in the first Genesis didn't speak well for Mango Spaces. In winners' finals, Mango would narrowly lose free two playing Falco. In grand finals, he once again started out with Falco, but after losing the first game, he switched his game plan and went pop for the rest of the set, a decision that would ultimately win him his first ever Genesis. But Mango was done with Jigglypuff. Today, it was Fox or nothing. All right, man. You already know what it is. We have finals, the rematch. Niggas is hype, son. Mango got a. Oh! First Genesis all over again. Hypo 5 Melee, man, here you have it. These are the two people that everybody wanted to see win, and to see them in Grand Finals is great. I don't need to tell you what Fox and Peach need to do, man. You just seeing two motherfuckers go at it. This is real Melee. This is real Melee. Armada would win the Grand Finals narrowly at 3-2. Mango didn't go back to his puff, and it perhaps cost him not only the entire tournament, but the yearly number one spot entirely. 2011 would see Armada receive his first ever title of best in the world, while Mango received runner-up. Fast forward a year and Armada would defend his number one spot, but this time Mango wasn't runner-up. It was the melee god PPMD. For the second time, someone using one of Mango's main characters would surpass him in the rankings. While third in the world was nothing to scoff at, Mango knew he could do better. 
and in 2013, he would give his all to not only pass PPMD, but Armada as well. But then, like a number one mango three years ago, after winning 2013's first major tournament tensely to PPMD, Armada decided to retire. After being number one for two years in a row, to him, there was nothing left to prove. Throughout the entirety of 2011, Armada only lost once, another tight grant final set with PPMD. Then, in 2012, he didn't lose at all. One of the only perfect year-long records in Melee's history. The first perfect year was achieved by Ken in 2003, when competitive Melee was in its infancy. So Armada's perfect streak was arguably more impressive. Not only because Armada attained more wins, but the meta had developed significantly since then. A new King of Smash was here, and now, after a perfect year, he decided to call it quits. Mango would not get another chance to face his rival, and he would have to live with a lackluster 3 set at Apex 2012 being the last time he would ever face him. Mango wasn't content, and so he attended the third edition of Sweden's biggest tournament series, Beast, co-organized by Armada himself. Surely here he would get to play the god. Mango would win singles and then doubles without dropping a single game. But the win was tainted by the fact that Armada wasn't present in either of the brackets. Although he came back home with two gold medals, he still felt empty-handed. Later that year, a familiar tournament series came back into the picture. The same tournament series that put Mango's name on the map back in 2007, EVO. EVO and Melee's reunion was far from simple. After EVO switched Melee out for Brawl in 2008, and then again in 2009, EVO would drop Smash from its fighting game roster completely. For the next three years, Smash wouldn't be included in the biggest fighting game tournament ever, and that didn't initially change in 2013. When looking at the year's lineup, there was no Smash, only the classic fighting games you would expect to see, like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Tekken. But there was an enigmatic 8th spot included this year as well, Player's Choice. When looking for an 8th game to include in their roster, the EVO staff held a donation drive for breast cancer research, wherein the gaming community that donated the most money to the drive would have their game take the 8th spot. Many games were eligible to compete, including Melee and Brawl, but it looked like neither of the Smash titles had a shot at first, as an unexpected game quickly jumped into first with over 3,000 total dollars donated. My Little Pony, Fighting is Magic. How could Smash compete against such a polished, groundbreaking, and innovative fighter? Well, all at once it didn't even have to, because the game wasn't even complete yet. With My Little Pony out of the running, Melee found itself first. But it was being followed close behind by another game, Skullgirls. Like a pendulum, the two communities raised the stakes higher and higher. Approaching the final day, both had raised a hefty $40,000 each, and it was still unclear who would win the drive. So the Melee community did what it did best, and came together in one final grassroots effort. A six hour stream was held by the Melee collective Melee It On Me, and would feature notable top players and community members. The goal of the stream was to come together and raise one last spirit bomb of donations to pass Skullgirls once and for all. The result would be $50,000 raised in that last single day. And just like that, Melee earned the 8th spot in EVO, not due to sponsors, organizations, or any other business. Thanks to its own community, Melee was back on the biggest stage. EVO 2013 quickly became the biggest Melee tournament of all time, with 709 entrants, doubling the previous record set at pound 4. It was so popular that Taylor Hicks, winner of the 5th season of American Idol, even tried his hand at the game. On the elite level, the four gods who were still playing signed up too. This wasn't just a standard national melee tournament anymore. This was something special, something melee had never seen before, and it incentivized one of its biggest players to sign up as well, Armada. But just as the melee community had done with Evo, they would once again have to donate to get their number one to attend. If the community could raise another $2,600, enough to cover his brother's travel and lodging, Armada agreed that he would go to EVO and, just this once, compete again. The Melee community had its top players back, and once the fun was met, the Melee god bought a ticket for the states. Now, not only was Melee back on the biggest stage, but all five of its biggest players were too. The first of the gods to face off was Armada vs PPMD. This was the grand finals match of Apex 2013. Now, it was just top 32. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my god. We're not god. even in semis yet. Uh, we're on Yoshi's story. Who did he PB pick? versus it's, Armada. It's Falco. Falco. We Falco and Marty. And, and PB himself has said recently, he said, he tweeted, the beak oh. at its peak. Oh! oh. Right, right, off the right off the top. Nice. And is he going to... And that's oh. it. Oh, oh my PB god. Beats Armada. Roger, PB beats Armada 2-0. Oh my god! Who would have thought this would have happened? That was amazing. PPMD sent Armada into losers early on and advances the top 16. For Mango to make it to top 16, he has to beat the best Pikachu player in the world, Axe. This could be it. Could we have them? Of course. Everybody texts in that direction, and that's gonna be it. First game to Axe. Is this winners? This is winners. And is this what you wanted? This is two out of three. Oh, this could be trouble. This is trouble. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Excellent. It's Axe going to pull off the second major upset of the day. Are we going to have two killers and lose this bracket? It's doing chance. The crowd is undecided. Yo, I got to say it. Marvel's in his hype right now. Oh, oh no. doesn't get that punish. And neither does Mango. A smash, but oh, DI's from Wade. Oh, he barely this missed a problem. Oh, Mango. Mango beats Axe and makes it into top 16. For top 8, he will have to beat the player ranked just outside the 5 gods, Wobbles. But Wobbles proves to be a challenge. Using Melee's most infamous infinite combo, the eponymous Wobbling, the Ice Climber main traps Mango in an inescapable grab early on in the set, and game 1 instantly becomes his. Don't. Get. get grabbed. Mango just up smash. Yep. Oh, oh I have infinite two! I have infinite two! I have infinite two! Between both ice climbers. Nice space. Oh, wobbles! Ooh. Mango fights back to win game two. And just like Axe, it'll come down to a game three. Down to both players' last stocks, all Mango needs to do is not get grabbed, and the game is most likely his. Trying to lose his bracket. Let's see what Mango does here. He has to get rid of Nana ASAP. Wobbles has so many setups. For the Wobbles! For the Wobbles! This is it! Wobbles is going to top eight with a side! Wow. Major upset! Wow. And PP. Mango unexpectedly dropped into losers, but he wasn't alone. Wobbles, currently having the run of his life, would take down two other melee gods, PPMD and Hungrybox, on his way to grand finals. Now, just like in Pound Free, Mango had a marathon ahead of him to become champion. First up is PPMD, currently ranked higher than Mango, but Mango makes it look like the opposite should be true instead. Beat me because Mango got stuck on there trying to chase him down after that. Oh my gosh! Here we go, he's chasing him down, trying to get him. Mango's trying to bring this one back, he might just do it here. Oh! He knew it, but just couldn't count on it, trying to put lowercase. Scott is hit and he can't make it back! And Mango! After being sent down to lose early on by PPMD, Armada tore through the bracket, not dropping a single game, and in doing so, caused a rematch that was never supposed to happen. Armada had retired as the undisputed best, but now Mango had one more shot to rewrite the narrative. He has this weird, unique thing where when everybody's watching him, when it matters the most, he's in his comfort zone. Which makes no sense. Nobody ever has everybody's eyes on them. Why, why would you feel comfortable then? A little bit of a stall tactic here, and he got back. Oh, this oh. is trouble. No, can't keep him out there. Hands are in and out, has knocked him out. He's taking his shirt off. His shirt's in the crowd. Melee Army's very own Mango saying, I wait so long for this one. The crowd says it all right now. Hey, from that blast zone. Every box needs a miracle right now. Please go. Oh, he went. Oh, he went that he roll. roll. He went that roll. None of what Mango had done with Scorpidorp or losing these random games here and there told his story. Like, I know he's the best player in the world. Best player of all time. Just in that one situation, but still, there it is. is, and there it is the up smash. And Wobbles is gonna go down 3 1. Mango has come off.
Out of the nine games EVO ended up featuring this year, it was the player's choice, Melee, that had one of the highest peaks of viewership during the entire stream. And the EVO staff realized they would be making a huge mistake not featuring the game again. Shortly after, Melee was announced at EVO 2014. Melee was slowly growing out of the Dark Age beforehand, but nothing compared to this. Suddenly, all at once, the game was entering a full-on renaissance, and Mango emerged as its number one player. After EVO 2013, Mango took a break from competing to care for his pregnant girlfriend Lauren. Thanks to winning EVO, he had a couple thousand dollars in his bank account to support his new family. But in California, that amount of money won't go far. So Mango made the decision to move with Lauren and her family to Ohio. Shortly after, on October 14, 2013, Joseph Marquez Jr. was born. And while his father's middle name is Manuel, Jojo's is Mango. With a family of his own, Mango realized he would need a more steady source of income than just tournament winnings here and there. So he set out to get a sponsor. Usually esports sponsors and teams stuck to more conventional games such as MOBAs like League of Legends and shooters like CSGO. But thanks to Melee's sudden rise at EVO and the recently released Smash Brothers documentary by Samox, Melee was getting a lot of attention and sponsors were looking to invest in the hype. But despite placing first at EVO and placing first overall for the entire year, Mango had a pretty tough time getting a team to sign him. And it was all thanks to one thing, his infamous role in the Smash Brothers documentary. In his episode, Mango is depicted as the party animal who doesn't have to try to win, and his portrayed image didn't exactly line up with the professional standards sponsors were looking for. Therefore, he was labeled as a problematic pick, and his dream team, TSM, would reject him. But one team was willing to look past Mango's portrayed image and give him a chance. Cloud9. In 2014, Mango signed with them and started earning $700 a month. Although this sum is pennies compared to what top esports athletes receive today, back in the day, especially to Mango who is now a father, this steady income was heaven sent. Mango had an excellent start under Cloud9, winning Get On My Level 2014. <laughs> but uh, also happy Mother's Day to Lauren, mm, because I had to miss Mother's Day to handle business. Since I won, me and Lauren are going to Red Lobster. What's let's up? Let's go, let's go. You can only afford Red Lobster if you're on Cloud9. Right. That's how you know you've made it. I'm gonna spend like a hundo, just because. Uh, <laughs> Red Lobster? Let's go. A tournament win that allowed him to enter another familiar tournament series, MLG. In 2014, Melee had grown so huge that MLG, a once monolithic gaming organization, wanted back in. And they weren't the only ones who wanted back in. Here's the man! Okay, now, a lot can happen in eight years, that's for sure. Was it your goal to change the game from the beginning? It was from my first tournament that all we wanted to become the best travel to America and take the title, and here I am to take it one more time. While Mango found himself in MLG Anaheim Grand Finals, so too did Armada. After Armada had lost his first place spot to Mango at EVO, his retirement was no more, as he once again had something to prove. But Mango was eager to prove himself too. He wanted to show the world that he could become a back-to-back -back world champion just like Armada. Oh my god! Wow, wow, wow. wow. Alright, they're on another level, but the Firefox almost gave an opportunity. Oh man, this hood, and it. that is the destruction! People were counting me out and said I was gonna get like fourth place. Like, get out of here, what are you talking about? Like, I always, people always tend to sleep on me, and if there was 10 melee commandments, one would be, thou shalt not sleep on the kid. Mango wins against Armada Frida 2 to claim his biggest cash prize yet, $5,000. And then, less than a month later, Mango won the year's crowned event, EVO 2014 becoming the tournament's back-to-back -back champion. And we have our champion! 2014, coupled with an equally impressive 2013, saw Mango in his best shape ever, taking home a majority of the biggest tournament names in a dominant two-year stretch. In both years, Mango would place first in over half of what he attended. And just like in 2013, Mango would once again end 2014 the best in the world. But, as was told in the beginning, Mango's story is a tale of high mountains and low valleys. The era of the kid, characterized by Mango's ascent from an unbashful youth with things to prove, to the undisputed back-to-back -back world champion, had reached its climax, and the conclusion was quickly on its way. Apex 2015 was known for a lot of famous sets, such as PPMD defeating Armada to claim the entire tournament, arguably his crowning achievement. But the most viewed match wasn't in the main bracket. It was an infamous side event, Leffen vs Chillin. 
Chillin, a ranked player back in the early days of Smash, didn't like how bashful and dismissive the rising star Leffen was of him and the people who came before him. So he challenged the new schooler to a first to five. Leffen accepted and boldly claimed he wouldn't have to practice as the match would be an easy 5-0. Gamer wants to know what's the set count gonna be against Ch um, Chillin. The people wanna know. I, I don't need to say anything. Everyone knows what I'm going to say. And it's gonna be 5-0. That, that's how it's gonna be. Why should I waste my time practicing against him? I'm gonna beat him anyway. Chillin made an entire diss track titled Respect Your Elders in response. The only way to make your hush, first I'll body bag your fox, then die zip it shut. I'ma put you in your place, kid. You Over a million people tuned in to watch this one of a kind, new school versus old school cage battle. And what they were about to witness was the slow crushing of a man's soul. Pit first, who's gonna miss pay something? Oh! Wow, and Chillin right now. But left it! Takes game two! And he's laughing. He's like, this man, he's not on my level. He's just waiting. Whoa, laughing. Did you just really do a firebox? Oh, oh, man, chilling, looking slightly flustered. Wait, the knockdown. That's smash. an up smash. And a 5 0. Right now, chilling gets dethroned. He is not using this color fox anymore. Leffen 5-0 chillin' dude in such a dominant fashion that his opponent couldn't even speak for himself after the match was over. Save for two infamous words. Chillin! Do you have anything you want to say to the people? My B. After seeing his compatriot at his lowest competitive point ever, Mango knew he needed to step up and defend Chillin. This man, okay, I went, I went to his country, and he beat me. Okay. But you come to my country, and you, you beat my man 5-0. If we play in bracket, we're gonna put 1,000 on it. 1,000. 1,000. If the two met in bracket, a thousand dollars would be put on the line by each man. And lo and behold, in winning semis, Mango and Leffen collided. Prior to this match, Leffen had just defeated Mewtwo King the set before, and in doing so, became the first person ever to take a set off of all the five gods. That's it, and Leffen takes it over Mewtwo King, a three stock on Dreamland. Leffen has made history. This novel feat was enough to earn him the title of God Slayer and the God Slayer was just getting started. Let's see. Whoa! Whoa! The side okay. clank! If he does this, he's the best. Yeah, if he does this, man, up till, not gonna- Oh! Yes, it is! Listen. What? While new storylines were being crafted, old ones were disappearing. Mango would lose his bold $1,000 bet and get sent down to losers. If he could do well enough versus Armada, maybe he could face Leffen again later in the bracket and redeem himself. Oh! The shield stab, and I thought Mango was gone, but... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it, though. Wow, the shield drop back here. That'll do it. 2-0. Yeah, I was gonna say Mango, um... And Mango, wow, he's looking really exhausted. You saw that deep breath. That's it. That will do it on Yoshi's story. Armada defeats Mango. I don't know, man. I don't even know. I don't even know what to ask. Any Anything you want to talk about, really? Any I, I realized life, life is this crazy, mystical thing, and sometimes you just go out like a buster, and there's nothing you can do about it. I think everyone, I want you to think about your life. How many times have you gone out a buster? It happens times. to everyone. Yeah. I went out like such a buster this weekend. <laughs> Holy moly. I act like Mr. Cool Guy on, on Saturday. I call out Leffen. Oh. And then I just get 3-1. No. No. And then I play Adam on Modern, and he just 3-0s me like. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. <laughs> that's how it goes, dude. Yeah, sometimes you're the buster, dude. And that's, and that's all you got to say about it. Amada's Frio on Mango at Apex 2015 set the tone for the rest of the year. In their next tournament, I'm Not Yelling, Mango was projected to take the tournament after defeating Armada Free 1 in Winners Finals. However, Armada clawed his way back to playing Grand Finals, and in doing so, gathered a newfound confidence. Oh, wow, Armada! Armada! Oh, that's it! Wow. Mango's fall from grace was highlighted further when he underperformed at EVO his comfort tournament. After getting knocked into losers by Plup, the only other player to take a set off of all five gods, Mango would lose to Hungrybox for fifth place. Mango goes for the 
classic wave land off the ledge. Yo, Mango actually recovered that way every- Not content with his lowest Evo placing ever, Mango decides against keeping his medal and instead throws it into the crowd. Uh, he, throw, he throws it! He throws Afterwards, he would watch the first place trophy go to perhaps the new powerhouse of Melee, Armada. The only god Mango didn't have a positive set record on. With Armada's Evo win, the Melee god looked poised to take Mango's number one spot come the end of the year. But Mango had one more attempt to bring it back from the depths. Just as 2015 was coming to a close, a new major Melee tournament series emerged unlike any other. At a first glance, this new tournament looks like a colossal letdown. Huge multi-thousand square foot venues were replaced with a single house. Player attendance transformed from the high hundreds into the low tens. There's nowhere to sign up for the event, and there wasn't even a listed address to attend to watch. But that's what makes Smash Summit so appealing. Never before seen in the Melee community, Summit was an exclusive invite-only tournament. In short, it was the best of the best, all in one house, competing for the biggest prize pool Melee had ever seen. Here we are, Smash Summit Grand Final! Despite there being an insane amount of talent gathered in one single room, it was ultimately Armada and Mango who made it to the first ever Summit Grand Finals. Mango was determined to transform 2015 into a successful year like 2013 and 14. Armada was determined to regain his title after a dominant 2011 and 12. This was Melee at its peak, and it was a peak only big enough for one. Oh, tried to down tilt, wasn't tilt. spaced. This, there was like no shield. Tried to react, but he messed up. Oh, oh my air. god, that forward air. It, uh, so the hit cool. wasn't out when he landed, so that wasn't a good oh, idea. This is so nice. Oh my oh. god. Just <laughs> forward smash saved him? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. He just went shield. for it. Yeah, no sign. I don't know about that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh Dude! Oh, it's not a big deal stream, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mewtwo King. The only one it was called. Is that uh, it? It's over. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's it. Oh, what a send your champion what? for Summit Armada. No one could see this coming. Yeah. How does he do it? Hey, man, I, I got to give Mango props for, yeah. okay, I like the little, uh, what, what you would call, uh, what's confetti. Well, I, 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 you know, hey, Mango did show us uh, the Falco, the Falco Peach. Mango narrowly loses, and in doing so, Armada would claim the number one spot in 2015. Mango, on the other hand, wouldn't even be runner-up. Hungrybox, who stopped Mango's free peat of Evo, and Leffen, who beat Mango at Apex, were both able to surpass him for second and third, respectively. Mango was now ranked fourth in the world, the worst world ranking he'd ever received behind his debut in 2007. 2016 kicks off with Genesis 3, where the previous Genesis winners, Mango and Armada, find themselves again in Grand Finals. Things are looking good when Mango wins his first set 3-1. to one. Oh, wow! <laughs> Yo, the heavens just want Mango to win! But he came from the loser's side and needs to win another set to take the whole tournament. Oh, God, we on Mango's side, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, and... In reality? The reality? The dream dead! Yeah, yeah dream dead. Armada. Mango can't find the ability to win another set, and in doing so, Armada takes the whole tournament. That was, a that great, was great, man. That was, a great that was wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you can argue these two are the best to do it, you know? For the second time in a row, Mango takes runner up. And that sets a trend for the first half of 2016, as Mango receives the most second places ever in one year, at seven. Only two tournaments broke this streak. Dreamhack Austin saw Mango, coming in from losers, win a tight Game 9 Grand Finals versus Hungrybox to finally claim his first tournament of the year. Mango finally does it! Mango popping off! Oh man! The, he does it! The champion! Oh, after the big marathon, Mango finally does it! One thing I always respect about HBox is that, like, he, it doesn't matter if he's down three stocks, doesn't matter if he's up three games, doesn't matter, yeah. it doesn't matter anything, he's always going to play his game, and uh, he stays real calm, and it's like, you know, I don't have that, like, he, I, I won the first set, I was like, oh, I was thinking about popping a champagne bottle in my head, I'm like, let's go, <laughs> and then, it's like, the thing that's very respectable about him is like, he just, no matter what, he like, he plays, he plays to his last stock, his last breath, like, still long, I'm like, happy, but I'm not, Satisfied, I guess. Would be. I'm not satisfied yet. But on the other side of the equation, at Smash Summit 2, Amada Frio's Mango. Oh, that was so oh, sick, Amada. Wow. You know yeah. that he's gonna take that one, and he doesn't even bother recovering. Yeah. This is really bad. Yeah. Maybe. Mango uh, kind of gave him again. Yeah, this is bad. Oh. Oh. Okay, that was cool. I, 
And that was That's a, an S-bat S-bat taunt, taunt if I've yeah. ever seen one in life. <laughs> Not, oh. oh. Is it over? I think so. That's it. 30. Yeah. Wow. Man. That was not, that was probably one of the worst Armada Mega sets I've ever seen. Probably. Yeah, that was bad. That was one of the <laughs> Armada goes on to win the entire tournament. Oh! Mega would catch a break and secure his biggest win of the year versus Armada at the Big House 6. But once again, the end of the year was dominated by Smash Summit. At its third iteration, it would once again be Armada who reigned victorious, being the first player ever to free-peat a major tournament. It was enough for Armada to secure 2016's number one spot, and now Mango's back-to-back -back championship spots were sandwiched between Armada's double back-to-back -back championship spots. At the end of 2014, people were calling Mango the greatest of all time, but coming into 2017, that crown was starting to slip onto Armada's head instead. Just as it was looking like Armada was the greatest of all time, Mango had one shot to flip the scales. Armada was coming off a so far flawless 2017, so it's no surprise that he found himself quickly in grand finals of Royal Flush, free owing DJ Nintendo, Hugs, Drugged Fox, and Hungrybox. His only real challenge came in the form of Mango, who he defeated in a tense Game 5 set. Mango, upon being sent to losers by Armada, would be trimmed in an equally tumultuous Game 5 set, and continue to work his way through the losers bracket, to come back and face Armada in grand finals. Coming from losers, Mango would need to win two sets versus Armada to be crowned champion. Sometimes, in Super Smash Bros. Melee, there are sets where two players are so evenly matched that no one can be sure of the outcome. Royal Flush Grand Finals is one of these sets. A clash of minds, spirits, gods. You guys ready for some Grand Finals, man? Yeah! Alright, I see I'm out in the back, but... Mango's already close enough, so let's go ahead and welcome back to the stage, Cloud9 Mango! The aerial and shielding after. Uh -huh. yeah. Tough DI spot to be in. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's like dead as a new dead. You know what I'm saying? Not for gun, baby. Right. I don't know if I could do it, but Mango. Uh-oh. Oh. And Armada, he's fishing. He's che reeling them in. He's cheesing them, baby. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to, man. So he's being, he's being buried. He's buried trying. There. No, oh, why you roll? Uh, and again. There you go. He almost threw that game. Oh, I think. Oh, wow, that was crazy. Yo. He's definitely looking for. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, he got a little greedy. Armada just a game away from being that one true god. Now I know exactly what's going. Your percent's going to be. I know exactly how to kill you. You know, hit you as hard as I can from this point. Armada has such a good has such a good wall to set those things up, and it, and it's really impressive to do that. Dash okay. That's a little yep. desperate. I got hit. Oh! Nice. And he said, listen. He's just a brick wall. It's just, if you're coming at him and you're not doing it 100% right, you're going to die or take a lot of damage. You can hear him. You ain't got to say nothing. Yeah, man. You ain't got to say nothing. Oh. Uh, he said, stop the crowd. <laughs> oh, Armada. Okay. Armada uh, up there? Oh. No. Ooh, the the flow pets. Oh, a little desperate with that dash match, I think. Maybe he thought that she get a shield poke. Oh, oh this no. is the mango dash. Oh! oh. Oh! That is always that moment of suspense. Oh! Oh! You know, beautiful if you get it. Oh! That's why you have the fans. Oh! oh. Ah. That peach combo ah. made, it, made it nasty. Oh! Ooh, for good, for good measure. For good measure. Yeah. Oh! Okay. Okay. Uh oh, dash that city. Oh, Mango. Oh, oh Armada. Yeah. One step away from walking home. The Royal Flush. Here at his heel. To get the dash and the up smash. Or just oh, it. That might be jump. It. When Mango got fared off stage, the crowd, the commentators, even Armada knew it was over as he followed him into the abyss. In just a few seconds, Mango's final stock of the tournament would disintegrate into stardust. But for Mango, time seemed to stop. 
and then in the blink of an eye, a stock is saved, momentum is gained, and the tides of battle shift. Oh, that could be it's it. Not over. He, he got it's greedy. Not over. Yep. He got greedy. Yep. Oh, yeah. And that could be the difference between walking home the champion. Oh, man, got a lot of momentum. Oh, oh the crowd's, crowd's on mass. deck. Out of oh, trouble. my goodness. Grab here. Up throw. That's an up throw in the air. Oh, oh he's there. I can't believe he bared right there. Oh, oh. Oh, oh is that a big? No, oh. more. Oh! oh. That was crazy. I don't even know what to think. That was crazy. It's just Mangle's really, really good at tightening it up, at least today when he has to. We got a set two, so Armada's gonna have to fight a little bit. Hasn't lost a sense since UGC. Against all odds, Mango came back to win set one, but the job was only half done. After a quick break, it's on to set two. It looked over. Yeah, I mean Armada, yeah. you have to play so consistently, and Mango is playing like up to par, lucky, right. 19 too, so it's looking good. We just gotta bring okay. it home. The losers bracket Mango. Losers bracket Mango versus losers bracket back Armada. Armada. Let's see who gets it. Tries to Serena Williams. Uh oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, that might be it. Eat your vegetables, baby. Yeah. Eat your vegetables. Good for you, your diet. And you make it game one like me. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, that's to do it. Yep. And one, one. Once again, Amada finds himself up 2-1 and only needs one more game to win the tournament. Mango's been here before though, he knows what he needs to do. Few Smash tournaments have ever been concluded on the rare game 10, for a set can only reach this number at the very end, when two competitors are so evenly matched that a single close set doesn't cut it between the two. Fortuitously, the Smash 4 Grand Finals set at Royal Flush came down to a game 10 as well. Year's best player, Zero, was being given a run for his money by Mr. R, who clawed his way back in the loser's bracket to fight for the title of champion. But ultimately, Zero would strike that marathon of a comeback story down into the depths below when it mattered most. Just a year later, Zero would be named the undisputed greatest of all time in Smash 4. Ironically, Mr. R would be named the 10th, painstakingly symbolizing the game he needed to win when it mattered most. Is it gonna uh -oh. be the reality check that we all need? Or can Mango make us believe in dreams again? This is what you wanted! Oh! Game five, second set! Game five, second set! There we go. Got that old. Oh, oh, he's moving! He's moving! Oh! oh. And Armada! <laughs> can he keep his. Can he? Oh. So he got a complete stop. So oh. slow. That's it! Uh oh! And Mango! And Mango, one so stop over the crowd. Oh, well. Oh, oh down. Image, I mean, at this Jump. point. True to his resilient nature, Mango completed his loser's run comeback to take the entire tournament, and this royal flush victory became part of an ongoing statement. A statement that read, no matter who was the best player at the time, whether it be Ken, Mewtwo King, or now Armada, Mango had what it took to beat them when it mattered most. While Armada would not end the year at the number one spot, it wouldn't be Mango either. 2017 would end with Hungrybox taking the spot, 
And that was just the start of Hungrybox's reign over Melee. While the Eagles were having the season of a lifetime, defeating the Patriots to claim their first ever Super Bowl title, Mango was having the exact opposite competitive experience. 2018 was the first and so far only year where Mango didn't win a single tournament he entered. That didn't stop him from getting close though, and a string of third and second place finishes were enough to grant the Melee God fifth overall for that year. But to Mango, fifth was just another sign that the Buster era was well on its way, and to others, it was a sign that his career as one of Melee's greats was over. He has relegated him to a shadow of his former glory, oh. placing his god status in serious question. What? What the f on the other side of the equation, while all three of the Floridian NFL teams were having lackluster years, Hungrybox was having the year of his life, winning more tournaments than all of their wins combined. The conclusion of 2018 saw Hungrybox easily retain his number one spot, and then in 2019, he did it again, becoming the first player since Ken to freepeat the yearly championship title. Hungrybox was also waning away Mango's dominant set lead against him. Although Mango was able to beat Hungrybox in all three of his championship years, Hungrybox, more often than not, came out on top. Less than a month after M. Fleming's Hungrybox documentary comes out, Smash Summit 9 is underway. Mango and Hungrybox are set to play in winner's top 8. Both have things to prove. Man, yeah, Hbox, just the way that he's playing, right? He's staying on these the right side platform, specifically going off stage so much. This must be frustrating. This is frustrating for Mango Ooh, right now. It's gotta be. Oh, bears are so... oh! oh, and he misses the tech, but... Oh my, oh, oh Hbox is on top of it. Oh, and he misses oh, the ledge dash. dash. It up. Damn. Hbox has been playing out of his no, mind Hbox has this been week. Playing well. He's playing so well. Lost Honest, two games. Mango will get sent down to losers by Hungrybox, but he can still face him again in Grand Finals if he plays well enough versus his losers final opponent, Plup. Smash Summit has never been Mango's tournament, but now, more than ever, he desperately wants to prove himself. Wow. Mm. Big nair there. Oh, tournament winner. That is not it. Yes, it is. Ooh, yep. Damage, but still living. Oh, Whoa, what Mango. was that double jump? Where yeah. are you going, my man? Oh, Mango meant to wave dash to the ledge. He missed his wave dash there. Is that, is that, that gonna be, is that gonna cost Mango? <gasps> Three grabs. 70%, 78, he's still living. <laughs> wow. Can he make it back oh! down to neutral? Oh, and missing Mango the tech. misses the tech. That's so crucial. Wow. Oh. Again, West Ball's pressure. Plup finds an air. That's going to be the stock. Yeah. This is potentially Mango's last stock at Summit. Will Plup go on to fight Hbox? Jeez. Will we have a game five? Mango shines off stage. So fast right now, but he gets grabbed. grabbed. Coming up the platform. Plup with the read. He keeps the tech chase going. Oh my god. Oh, oh this might be it right here. And that might be it right there. Yeah. And that's it. Mango is knocked out of the tournament. It is going to be Plup versus Hbox in Grand Final. Look at the mood. Mango out at third. Mango would not advance to the coveted grand finals match. He would not be able to prove himself. All that Mango had was a relatively disappointing third place finish, and a growing popular sentiment that he was not capable of keeping up anymore. Right now, in this moment, he felt like he was nothing. Mango goes outside the Smash Summit venue and does something uncharacteristic, something he's never done at a tournament before. He cries. It's one of the least known facts about him, that after Smash Summit 9, he just didn't know what else to do. While one might call these actions weak of a top player, I disagree. A top player is not merely defined by being strong and confident, but also by being introspective and emotionally genuine. Hungrybox would go on to win Smash Summit 9, and while the yin and yang of Melee couldn't look more different from one another, they also couldn't look more similar. Yin and yang are not flawless parts. Within themselves, they have just the smidgen of the other, and this little unassuming dot has the capability to one day transform itself into the other completely. When Mango won EVO in 2013, the narrative surrounding that win produced one of the only times Hungrybox competitively broke down. Seven years later, when Hungrybox won Smash Summit 9, the narrative leading up to that win produced one of the only times Mango competitively broke down. A completely different story, but yet somehow the same. He represents one of the few remaining links between old and new Melee. And as much as some Melee fans would like to forget, he's an integral part of the game's history and legacy. A completely different story, but against all odds, the same. It's tough when expectations fall short, but it's even tougher when the expectations aren't there in the first place. Emplemon used inconsistency to count Mango out, 
But it's precisely because of Mango's inconsistency that you shouldn't. Because here's the thing about competition. The greatest of all time was never the greatest every time. Notice how the bishop is actually trapped. Magnus puts his bishop on a7. He knows it's going to be taken. Here comes Christian Coleman. Ball pulls up. Oh, look at the acceleration there. He wants to hit it. Double tucker Raymond, and he sat it out as well. Goodness me, I didn't expect that. So accurate, so precise with every one of his lap. And she could just run with it. Exactly. Oh! Jacob Ellis goes down. Oh, Jacob Ellis goes what? down. A shocker on the home stretch. Oh. Tanya Freed of Switzerland grabs the goal. Right there. Yeah. And that's it. Mango is knocked out of the tournament. It is going to be Plump versus Sage Boxing Grand Finals. Look at the mood. Wow. A great competitor is not defined by avoiding losses, but their ability to rise stronger after each one showcasing a profound level of toughness and determination that transcends anything resembling ordinary. We have a winner! While consistency will always be ordinary, inconsistency holds the power to be extraordinary. Bronze redemption belongs to Lindsay Jacob Ballas! It's where setbacks have the potential to transform into comebacks, where years of experience and passion for the game Another world record. can manifest into one single flicker of a light. A light that has the potential to erase any shadow, only if its user chooses to kindle it. Mango, despite being counted out, kept on playing Melee that day. In the lowest of lows, he found the spark to keep on climbing. And when he eventually reaches the top, there will be something telling in the view. The low points were not disastrous or ruinous, but beautiful, because they added depth to the story, growth to the character, the change needed to define Melee's greatest of all time. But we are not at a particular summit just yet. We are still in a valley. Just as Hungrybox was not the one to end Mango's streak of being number one, it wouldn't be Mango who ended Hungrybox's streak. It would be someone new. Someone who up to this point had been sneaking up through the rankings, quickly becoming one of Melee's most unstoppable forces. Zayn Nagami. On the exact day that the Hungrybox documentary was posted, the Melee God was sitting down to play at the grand finals of Genesis 7. Based on initial bracket calculations, it was suspected that Mango would be the one to face him in Grands. But Mango wasn't sitting on the opposite side of the setup. In his place was the player who upset him to take his spot, Zane. Not ready, what? Oh, 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 that's gonna be it. Zane's not missing that. Whoa! Oh, Mango takes it, Zane's dead! Oh my god, Zane lives it! Zane's giving oh, Mango my. a chance to breathe, but no, he's going right in. He went in. right in. Yeah. No! Oh, where is he that's going? It. Does he recover high, low? What does Zane got? That's gonna do it, Mango not using it. It was definitely the same feeling where it was like I can reshape like the history of Melee right here. Like something that I've watched since 2014, 2015. It's like I am about to make an impact on this. Oh, that's gonna be Zane! And, and Zane takes Genesis 7 to his first time on the big stage versus a veteran hungry box, the number one player in the world for years. And Zane, the newcomer, the player that Mango's looking out for. Everyone knows that Zayn is a problem now. Zayn had just won his first super major, and he wasn't about to stop there. Due to COVID-19, Melee moved online indefinitely. Three months after Genesis 7, the first online major was held, Pound. And once again, the grand finals is Hungrybox versus Zane. But this time, it's not close at all. What is going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he does oh it. Zane with Where's the, the three stop. Including their winner's final match, Zane 6 0s Hungrybox, making the free time yearly champion look like someone who had just picked up the controller for the first time. And it's not just Hungrybox. Like, I, I want to leave a mark here. In their very next major, Zane beats Mango 6 1 making his second god look like a completely new player. Zane takes LACS 2. Zane kept on winning from there, looking untouchable. During the online era, the most prominent tournament series was the Slippy Championship League. With eight iterations being run in total through the online era, Zane would win over half of them. The only one who could even come close to hanging with Zane was Mango. And he's the closest by far, but it still just feel like Zane. Zane just, you know what the thing yeah. is? Yeah. Zane feels like such a complete player. Like yep. it's just so hard to criticize. 
anything he does. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like there's no holes in his overall game plan. And you really have to catch him slipping. And Mango, I mean, he's such an incredible, aggressive player that he's able to take you to that limit and and kind of push you into situations where he tests all your fundamental, you know, responses to different things. Because Mango, you know, he really makes you think of the fly. But Zane, mm -hmm. you can't test him. You really Don't test can't. him. I mean, you got to ask yourself after this result, uh, how long is this going to last? Maybe yep. a while. I don't know. Are we? Feels like is this going to be a long start? winter? Mango knows it. Zane knows it. Uh -oh. Oh, it's, oh. Oh. oh, my God. He's having it forever. Oh, oh, and that's it. There it is. is. Zane. Three, two. What, what a game. What, an what a game. Dude, the edge guard. That is insane. Zane. Congratulations to game. Zane with the huge win over Mango. Yeah, my that's God. actually unbelievable. This guy just upset the man. That Dude, upset everyone. Armada and Hungry Box yeah. yesterday. Mango was playing quite nice. And now Honestly, Mango's yeah. in losers. Armada's in losers. Hungry Box is in losers. In 2020, Zayn added a summit win to his already impressive tournament resume, and he unofficially became the year's number one player. Holy oh. Oh. He went for oh, it. Oh, no, Zayn oh. with the colossal turn. Oh. That's it. Oh, okay. and here oh. it is. It seemed crazy that someone could rise through the ranks in the modern day melee meta so fast, but Zayn was just that good. Not only rising through the meta, but leaving a lasting impact on it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. almost like every tournament is getting worse and worse it's for the field. It's looking like he's he's getting unstoppable. No, I was it's... saying to chill at the beginning of the week, and I was like, would you rather bet if if you know, assuming uh, you could Zane bet versus the field. Zane or anyone else winning the tournament? And we we're both like, I'd rather Zane. I would yeah. take Zane, and it was just. It was hard to say anything other than Zane's gonna win. Before Zane, the last time a solo Marf ever won a major was Ken back in Evo 2007. For the next 10 years, no other solo Marf saw victory. Throughout this period, Marf was seen as great, but not great enough to win tournaments alone. But after Shine 2018, Zane challenged that sentiment. That much juice left in this stock. He crouches for dear life, and he gets the other And after Genesis 7, Zayn and his solo Marf were winning all the time, especially versus one character in particular, Fox. Throughout the entire online era, Zayn never dropped a single set to anyone playing this character. The meta narrative five years ago was that Fox was the end-all be-all best character in the game, but now Zayn's Marf was unbelievably making the character look like a destined low tier. It didn't matter if you were the best Fox main in the world at that point, Zayn would still make you look like you didn't stand a chance. It was enough for the number 2 player, Leffen, to switch characters entirely when playing Marth. It's time for me to stop playing Fox only and pick up Sheik, for Marth specifically. In his mind, the Fox Marth matchup was not only unfavorable, but wholly unwinnable. And that was due to one component, Zayn's counterpick stage. Final Destination. Zane's dominance on Final Destination created a formidable reputation, leading many to expect his victory whenever the stage was chosen. That's due to the stage's most notable feature, or perhaps lack of feature, as Final Destination houses zero platforms. With Zane's precise combo execution, and nowhere for the opponent to really retreat to, usually all Zane needed to take a Fox stock on this stage was one grab alone. So when the online era inevitably ends, all eyes are on the dominant and formidable Zane. After being quarantined indefinitely, Smash Summit 11 would become Melee's first in-person tournament in over a year, and this tournament was proving to become one of Melee's most unforgettable. Instead of having a prize pool akin to crumpled dollar bills of the Dark Age, or the handful of thousand dollars of the Renaissance, Summit 11 managed to gather the highest prize pool of any Melee tournament in history at a mind-boggling $155,000. To put into perspective of how insane this number is for Melee, whoever gets first at this tournament would instantly pass the Melee God PPMD's total prize pool earnings. PPMD played competitively for 7 years. Smash Summit 11 also collided with the 20th anniversary of Melee. For two whole decades, people gathered to play the game they loved. And even during the pandemic, that didn't change. And now, its best players were back in person to play it once more. That far. Wow. Sword just. Oh, just Zane, up. what are you even doing? Oh, I'm confused. Oh, oh, way. oh, oh, so oh no. no. This is actually on 12 other levels. <laughs> yeah.
Crouch cap is none, but. Uh oh. Yes. This, this oh is my rough. God, yo. Ouch. Oh. All right, Zane wins the pool. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> After that, Zane quickly defeats Kadoran, the second best Marth player, Frio. Oh. oh, that's it. That's it. Jump up there. Come on, oh. Kadoran. Please. <laughs> Play aggressive. Oh, oh and, no. And he jumped through. Then he defeats the God Slayer, Plup, Free One. Oh. oh my God. Zane. Then he defeats the God Hungry Box, Free One. Oh, oh. It was almost too easy for him. Zayn arrives in Grand Finals on the winner's side just like that. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, that guy Pretty might good. just be the best player in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>After winning the preliminary rounds free one, Mango exits his pools on winner's side. Now it's time for the bracket matches, the ones that truly count. Left is extremely talented and once again, another match that potentially be grand finals. Who feels like the favorite it, it, when they face off either? Oh, yeah. right, right, right. right. That combo. There's pressure. Wow. Oh, there it what is. do you do about that? Still living. Oh, oh no, he's too far away. Short. Wow. Three, one, club. Mango loses his first bracket match against Plop, and finds himself in losers before Top 8 had even begun. Smash Summit is one of the few major tournament series that no matter how hard Mango tries, he just can't put the pieces together. Mango will tweet that at this point, he might just drop out. The prophecy was turning out to be true. Maybe Hungrybox was the only remaining melee god. But then Mango, like he always has, picked himself back up. Judgment time. Did you think, even for a minute, that you would come to this tournament and beat everyone? No. But see, I'm gonna tell you guys one thing. I would love to hear one thing. That I cannot play the game for 10 years. Literally 10 years. I know you're gonna say And I can come to a tournament, and there's always gonna be that 1% chance, no matter what, that I'll play amazing, go into Neo mode, and lay the smack down. There's always that chance. And you know what happened? That when people start sleeping on me, all the energy comes. Everyone was already counting me out, and then I can feel it in the air. Mango knows who he isn't. Shadow of his form. And he knows who he is too. The kid. The buster. The goat. Mango is set to face the God Slayer Plup, who sent him down to loser's bracket in the first place. His next opponent is a familiar face, the only other player who has won melee major tournaments in three different decades. The first time the duo played was 2009. Now, 12 years later in July 2021, the two remaining gods sit down to play one more time. Hungrybox is melee. And you know what else? Hungrybox is the best in the world. And Hungrybox is the last of the gods. Melee is approaching the precipice of an entirely new era and Hungrybox remains the last stickler of the old days. In a way, Hungrybox carries the torch of all the gods. Newer players will never know the satisfaction of challenging a prime mango, 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 mango. At the end of the day, only one person walks away a winner. No yep. exceptions. These two players have played grand finals at so many events. They've been on the Evo stage, the Genesis stage, the Big House stage. You oh, yeah. and, 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 and. Don't fucking hurt, dude. Fucking 
and you used to be the best, but now you're not winning tournaments anymore. Now everyone calls you what? Everyone calls you fat. Everyone calls you alcoholic. They say Mango don't got it anymore. They say this and say that. Because I didn't quit. I didn't run off. I didn't start speedrunning. I didn't start playing a shittier Smash game. I took my ass beatings like a man, and I will be back at the top. And when I get it back, I will be the champion of Melee. In fact, well, most he, of the I day. Think he entered into the top eight for me, right? Because he lost the a box. box. Yeah, uh, what's going on, man? <laughs> Hungry Box joining us Talk on the to mic. Us. Amazing this, this performance. Is, this Hungry is the box. way it should be. It's going to be an incredible grand finals, um, and it's the way it should be because the, these are the uh, two best players in the studio right now, and that's what grand finals should have. Good shit, Mango. All the viewers are here now. All the viewers are here now. If you want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get the bed. I got third. You? I pl Come on. I would have been furious if you beat me. I would have been so fucking uh, mad. Game four was totally like a coin flip. But if I would have beaten you, I, we would have gotten that. I think if you beat game four, I might have lost. But I was composed. Maybe not. Because you know, I, I would have went back to Yoshi's. You know, I'm going to say this right now. I was always like a firm believer in this, but seeing how far I've been here and doing like that, I think I might be ready to call it the GOAT. You think so? Yeah. Nicest thing you've ever told me. Like, you're, you're, you're still in this shit after everything. Are after you drunk? Fuck yeah, dude. Come on. Let's do it. I mean, yeah. we couldn't have asked for a better match to represent the game that we have loved for the last 20 years. Absolutely. Most parts, you just roll away, dash out. Oh, but Mango, oh, look at him! Oh. Oh. So he just doesn't want to get by the sword. Like, oh, my. Said. Oh, what? 407. Oh, he's oh, alive! Yo. What's happening right now, guys? 207 yo. for Mango Fox? Oh. Oh. Okay, oh my god. There's no fear. Marth can absolutely oh, melt my. Fox Careful, in this Mango. position. Yes. Zane just needs one grab here. Oh. Nice oh. Mango he's reading the... Really the... Really out. Mm -hmm. oh. oh god, the venue's freaking out now. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, That's it. it. That's it. Zane takes oh, game one. Oh, my wow. goodness. No, right. he can't. And I think part of being a top competitor is bouncing back. About this is that Mango did try to finish oh, it with oh. a... Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was that was almost... oh. oh, my God. Oh. Double fair. So one of a kind oh. stuff for Mango right now. What's but the fact that Force Master yep. is going to deal with... Oh, I like that. Yeah. That was fire. Caught me by surprise. Yeah, the foul fire. Wow. The VUA saying that. Yeah. A lot of people missed that there. So Counter. Oh, Tipper. Dead. Oh, wow. Oh, nice nair. Quick two piece. Oh, yeah. he's different. He's different. Oh, no, shield oh, grab for Mango. A B. That's yep. it. Zane's up 2 0. I felt that up. Thing in specific that you're looking for versus Mango? Honestly, I know. I feel like my play style just counters him a lot. Yeah. Just like, he just has to be super aggressive all the time. Right. And honestly, like, for Marth, it's just like, if I get one grab on him, he's just yeah. gonna die. He gets the side. That should be a back here. Yes, sir. Yes, yep. Oh, oh. Gonna try to play loose oh, and yeah. bring. Yeah. His money ultimately is the aggression. And it, I think it's it's good. Like he didn't even really get punished. Oh my there. Like Zane's gonna sit here and think about it. We know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> Mango the real needs to question win is, can Mango games. do it twice? He needs to, he needs to do it yeah. twice and then win another reset it right is, after. Yeah. Mango wins game three, but now in order to win the set, he will have to beat Zane on Final Destination twice. He sticks it out with the character who, like him, was unfairly Whoa. counted out. Oh. Oh.
Oh, oh my goodness. Same up at the ceiling. Uh, they heard that P and they, or they saw a P and they were oh, some honest neutral right okay. there. Beautiful stuff. Go, but Zane nice. picks it up right here. Zane? Oh. oh. Down tilt. Oh, Still going. Holy smokes. <sighs> Zane at oh. 117. Swanton oh. bomb. It's chilling. We trust. The uh, under shooting Yo, so that much. that bear was crazy. That bear was actually shooting. He's bringing it all the way. Oh, oh, oh. my goodness. What a forward. <laughs> but it's not enough to take the stock. Oh my oh. god, is it coming to turn around right here? Yeah, you gotta be careful around the ledge with Zane, but that's gonna do it. All right. Wow. Ooh, man, I gotta hold on to this one. Up there, up there. Zane. Oh, misses in there. Yeah. Oh. Up tilt trade. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh okay. this could be the last stock. Uh -oh. Never forget. Guys, oh, yo, remember why? what map we're on. What? Remember what map this is. <laughs> one frame is all it takes. Zane, uh -oh. this could be the tournament. This could be the tournament for Zane. Uh -oh. 41, 50, 53. Oh, he oh, dropped it. it. Uh-oh! Big Nair by Mango. Get up up smash! Oh, it's up smash! Oh! That was it. so weird. Game five? Yo. Oh. That's it! Okay, we're going to game five. No, 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 the way that you want to, yes. Scar. Is he gonna get this one? Maybe Zane getting a bit oh, antsy. Okay. Mango still Shield has a break. chance. Oh, yes! No. Oh, okay, okay, no. okay. What's happening to what? Zane? What? What? I'm seeing a little bit of crumbling. Uh, okay, no, that's stop. a stop. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a stop. One stop away oh, from a reset. From Mango. Oh, yo. Oh, yo, he's God. cooking. He's, on. he's cooking. Oh, my he's goodness. cooking. Just listen to Brandon. Oh! <laughs> How it's is his controller? Crazy. I feel like Mango's controller should be melting. Yeah. For two years, no Fox had ever taken a set off of Zane, but the journey was not over yet. With the impossible achieved, Mango was only halfway there. Remember, when your wings are weak, your spirit's done, and you're flown as far as you can, you're halfway there. They this is into it. Right set into it. Set to it. Set to. Wow, they did not want to yeah, break. Yeah, Zane, Zane has some uh, nerves a little bit. For Perhaps. sure. But I think here no, in that crowd, man. Well, that was a crazy. That's it. That was a crazy. But, living. Yeah. but Zane ain't having it. He's like, what? Oh. What the hell? Oh, my goodness. What was that four-piece combo? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Zane. Oh, oh does it? He's gonna have one Not more quite. Uh oh. Down tilt. That Force shit. Mass. It's gotta be nice. right. Zane, Zane on the board. Game one. When Zane gets comfortable, best player of all time and time is good. He's like Armada time 88. When Zane gets comfortable, no one will ever be better than that guy. Oh, up goes Thrill. Whoa, whoa. Relax, man. Counter. A B. Oh, no. Wow. He's dead here. This is looking like a Zane game, too. I yeah. Know. Ooh. Wow, what a punish. A smash. Oh, oh. A smash. Last stock, Bangle gets the opening. Okay. 50%. Wait, Zane's Back not, Zane's oh, not no. taking. Oh. No, he's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. The speed gets shield probe. Bangle with another lead. Oh. 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 Beautiful oh. tech by wow. Zane. Oh! No chance that Bangle just dash dance and spark up smash his fate. We're going the distance, Scar. 1-1 one, one right Bro. now in set two grand finals. Oh, jeez. Okay. Big combo for Zane. Jabs. Oh, oh count. Oh. Oh, so that's 23. Oh. Okay. Oh, let's see on another grab. This might last here. Crowd silent. Crowd get quiet in the venue. Oh. Oh. Zane. Maybe. Because he didn't wait that step. Ah. Uh, okay. Oh. This Ooh. is. Oh. Yep. One off four there. Zane flashes. Oh, oh wait a minute. Still alive. One more chance. Yeah. Zane's going to recover. Zane's going to pick this up. Yeah. Hey, yeah. right, wait. This time for sure, right? Huh? The laid back air. Grab ledge. Yeah. yeah. All right. 2 1 Zane. FD off the field, but Mango still needs to win two games. Zane, one away from finally closing the set. Mm -hmm. In a game four. Can he bring it to a game five? Will this be a 10 game set again? Oh! Between these two players, it's looking like- He's still alive. What? This is he's still nuts. Yo, 
Okay, oh, okay. Right. Mango right. with a lead, but you uh -oh. can't get too comfortable. Grab. You gotta be careful here. Back throw. Oh, oh. that's wow. a falling up right there, but yeah. Mango's gonna come out on top of the situation. Oh, no, he keeps that the third shine spike right of the game. Yeah. Up air. Ooh, Ooh, all right. Wait a minute. That's a flare to it. Oh, 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 no. oh, Last okay. up, game four, it could end right here. Oh, Zane can win the tournament right here. I honestly just don't know Jai what guys to expect right the... now. This is crazy. Oh, he been quick for that. Mango, yes, he's still going for it. Zane has like almost no oh shield. My God. Oh, we're going to game 10. Oh, I can't my goodness. goodness. We're going to game 10. Game I can't 10, believe it. Stadium off the table. FD off the table. Is this what you wanted from Where Smash Summit 11? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, Oscar! This is exactly, oh yes, bro. This is exactly, exactly why. This is what we the wanted. The pop bonus is ridiculously yes. high. The two best players in the world. The biggest pot ever. Mango wins game 9, and it's on to game 10. 14 years ago, Mango bested the greatest in the world. A year later, he would do it again. Five years after that, he was the world champion. A year later, he would do it again. Three years passed, and he would take down one of Melee's most unstoppable forces in a Game 10 situation. Four years later, could he do it again? For the shield grab, Zane's gonna punish! In Siddhartha, a novel about a journey into self-realization, the protagonist, at perhaps his lowest, sits down and meditates under a mango tree. It is here where he figures out that in order to attain salvation and become one with the gods again, he must first regain his innocence, becoming what he once was. He must transform himself once again back into the kid. Be rough, but it's doable. Playing from behind practically like this, this the whole Okay. Mango chasing him with an air. Back That's air. another yep. bad board beat. Mark Killer is still there, right? Oh, no, no. He's he gets ability. He can just roll up. All right, tie, tie game again. Game again. Two both players yeah. dropping combos. They're fighting for it. It's They're fighting it's for the life. This has been a grueling <laughs> set. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, the bear's not there. What's Somehow it just looks like Mango's going to hold Wait, on oh a little bit this longer. Is but that is! We're going to last stop. Oh, it has to be this way. It has to be this way. I'm losing my brain. Crowd look crazy. Chad from Mango. Oh. Oh. Oh, the shield drop. Zane dropping the punch. He's going to the top. Mango takes it. Mango winning his first ever Smash Summit. What? And the biggest prize for the Smash history. The biggest prize for the Smash history. I cannot believe it's guard. Mango a champion through the ages. He has finally done it. Zane was so close so many times, but I think the pressure was just too much. Oh my god. I don't believe it. I don't believe I got it. Me up out of my seat, I don't bro. believe it. I just was that the greatest set of melee? That was that the I, 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 that's, I'm the greatest. calling it that. We've been playing for, been playing for 20 I, I'm years. I'm waiting for the pundits and the analysts. My goodness, that was the set of gold that I I can't believe it. Top eight. I just can't believe it. That is crazy. I gotta give my man a hug. I'm not scared about anybody. Well, I think I'll be with all my friends that I play every day. Either way, we're all going to go. Since the first day I played Smash, I always said I wanted to be the greatest Smasher. I always didn't want to be the best. I wanted to be the greatest of all time. That's fucking shit, dude. Damn. That was crazy. Oh my god. God, dude. That's a classic. Yeah. I thought I'd win a summit. I was just about I was just, I was just about to ask. Actually, I fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to Baylor. I'm speechless, man. I, I can't fucking believe I brought it back. Like I, I'm fucking I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah. On November 21st, 2021, Melee Stats released their comprehensive list of the best 100 Melee players in the game's beautifully rich 20-year history. Oh, get the laser. Is he gonna run down? Okay, oh, the he does it! Smash is gonna do it. Mango taking it.
I would like to end this video with one point, and once again, it comes from the video that inspired its creation. Hungrybox is melee. This is true, Hungrybox is melee. And you know who else is melee? Mango. The kid, the buster, the now goat. Melee is not just any one individual. If that were true, it would be quite a lonely existence. Instead, Melee is a community. A community filled with talented players, commentators, organizers, creators, and fans alike, all tied together by their unwavering passion for this sick 2001 party game. So yeah, Hungrybox is Melee, just as Mango is too. These are just two stories in the realm of the beautifully imperfect Super Smash Bros. masterpiece, Melee. And while it is a masterpiece, it's only so because of a passionate and adoring community who never let go of the game they love. This video isn't the end of Mango's story, but there will come a day when the GOAT no longer touches a GameCube controller, and the community will be at a loss with such a monumental presence gone. But it will pick itself back up, because time and time again, when Melee is supposed to be no more, a new generation was always there to pick up the pieces. And I don't believe that trend will end anytime soon. Brings a tear to my eye, Tove. He said it to me last night. Because, like a wise Melee player once said, said, I feel like there's so much more Melee to be played. Mm. 